Hi guys, this is Gary Pope from Late to the Table, and today we're going to be talking about containers. Now before we talk about containers, we gotta first talk about the dimensions of your box because that is crucial. Now, most boxes are roughly around the range of around two inches, unless if you're talking about one of these small, like, good cop, bad cop kind of boxes, or One Night Ultimate Werewolf, or any of those little sort of boxes. We're not including those in these discussions. So if you want to kind of an idea of how some of your boxes are, I'll go ahead and grab some off my shelf. So like Steampunk Rally, I will consider this actually, it's a big box, but it's on the thin side in terms of depth. And this one is right on the dot of two inches. Just give you guys a heads up. And then we also have a game like Mysterium. Mysterium is more along the standard size in terms of like what size most boxes are. This is comparable to Ticket to Ride, I'd say. And this is just a little over three inches you're not gonna see that because my fingers perfectly in the way but it's a little over three inches so what does that mean that means that the ideal depth that you want of your box is to be roughly around an inch and a half and the reason why it's roughly around an inch and a half is because if it's at two inches and for a lot of these boxes it's going to be basically pushing the top of it up and also you barely or might not even be able to fit in the rules in there perfectly anymore so if you have it at about one and a half inches it'll fit into most of your boxes your rules will be able to fit in there and everything should work out so now that you know that information let's go ahead and start with the containers okay so first up are these tin containers what's so nice about these is that these are made out of tin they're really durable and they have a pretty good saw size to them they are basically two and a quarter inch all on all sides since it's a square and it's about one inch deep so it is pretty thin some little problems i have with it is that when the weather's really hot or in certain situations like i'm having right now it's a little tough to open up like i'm struggling a little bit so imagine having like five of these so in the top so i'm not advertising this one really well am i but it still is a pretty solid tin, uh, case. If you want a tin little case where you can see through the top, there you go. Um, now this one is, I'd say it's a little bit more on the expensive side. Uh, you can get this one for roughly about $21 plus shipping and you get 30 of them. So if I'm not mistaken, the math of that comes out to roughly about 70 cents per box. So there's option number one, the tin box. Okay, so the next one on the list of these like jewelry round storage containers. They are two inches in diameter. They're about one inch deep. They're a great size, they're a great shape. I would say these are like perfect for holding pandemic uh, germs in them, uh, the viruses or what have you. Um, now my problems with those, that's plastic and it's lightweight, but for what you get, these are definitely on the expensive side. I mean, to get these on Prime, it's $23 for 30 of them. So I mean, when you compare it to a tin box versus plastic, it's kind of weird, but they exist. Now the next one on the list are these geek boxes. Now I actually personally don't own them but I'm literally actually purely going off this based off of the Amazon reviews and just what I've heard from other people and actually haven't seen them in the past. Now some things to note about these that they're kind of just as expensive as the items I just mentioned before for something that's plastic. But what is a selling point of them is that they literally have the perfect dimension. So it makes these so good dimensions that it's about two and three quarters all the way around in a square and then they're about one and one quarter inch deep which is great so with dimensions like that that means it can hold a pretty good amount of stuff in it and it can almost fit in probably just about any box maybe even those smaller boxes i brought out before actually you know what just to check let's confirm that yes it actually would be able to fit in a box of one night ultimate werewolf so there you go. Okay, next up on the list is in a line of a bunch of heavy duty containers. And this is the Super Stacker Itty Bitty box, if I'm not mistaken. So what's so great about these durable ones is that, like I said, they're durable. These are heavy duty. These are basically used for tools and power tools, so like that for nails and everything like that. As you can see here, they have clamps to open up. They are also stackable and it's just really thick plastic. And I could see these being used in heavy duty games and stuff like that, like where you'd use Plano boxes. Or is it Plaxo boxes? Plano? I think it's Plano. Now, out of all of the containers we're gonna be showing you today, this one has my favorite dimensions by far. Now this one is at three and a quarter inch in length. It's two and three quarters inch in width. 
and it's one and a quarter inch in depth, so it's the same amount of depth as that last one I just showed you. So this actually makes it to be a bigger box than the Geek Box one, more durable box, and just about everything's perfect about these boxes, except for the price. So with a heavy duty product, you're paying a heavy duty price. With this, this is, you get five of these for 10 bucks. So that comes out to literally two bucks per box. So and it's a hefty price to pay. Now the next one is another one which I do not own, but they are actually made by the same company as this one. They actually are just basically the older brother of this one. And that is the Super Stacker Pixie Box. Now there's only really two difference with this one, if I'm not mistaken, the dimensions and the price. The dimensions are fairly similar. It's the exact same length. The width is actually a little bit shorter. It's two and a half rather than two and three fourths but the depth becomes two inches, so it's a little bit bigger. And then you're paying quite a considerable amount more. You get four of those for 13 bucks, which if you're gonna compare the two, the other one was two bucks per box, this one is $3.25 per box. And if I didn't screw up on my math, I'm pretty sure that, that one is the most expensive option that I'm gonna be showing you today per box, if you're buying per box, or think about it per box, whatever. And the next box I'm going to show you is the really useful box, which basically is pretty much along the lines of the exact same box I just showed you a second ago, but I had a picture of it. Uh, this one is three and one fourth inch in length, two and a half inches in width, and two inches in depth. Now the reason I'm showing these ones is that if you can actually get down to an Office Depot, you actually probably can order these to the store and save a considerable amount of money if you want to go along this route. If I'm not mistaken, online you can get this sent to a store with free shipping to that store and it'll cost $1.30 for each of these. So that's literally almost a third of the price. Okay, so now we're gonna start straying away from all the plastics. This is the paper mache jewelry box. Now, some of the specs about the jewelry box is that it's cheap. It's, uh, I mean, it's paper mache, like it feels like it's cardboard. It, it's fairly, I wouldn't say it feels cheap, it feels thick, it feels solid. Like it feels like it can hold its stuff in there. But um, compared to plastic, yeah, it feels cheaper. Can't deny that. But the dimensions are just so good. It is three inches by three inches by one and a half inches. So it's right up there in terms of being really good and one of the best in terms of dimensions and fitting in most of your boxes. But for what it is, it still is fairly expensive for cardboard. I mean, to get 12 of these is gonna cost 10 bucks, which comes out to roughly about, if I'm not mistaken, 83 cents per box. So it's a it's a little bit pricey, but I mean, it is nice. It comes with a top, and yeah, there you go. If it was cheaper, this would probably be my favorite, to be honest. Okay, so now we are on to the last item, and this is the yet another cardboard option, and this is the Party Favor Gift Box. Now, long story short, I'm basically considering these the penny sleeves of storage containers. They're at a pretty solid size, they're not the best dimensions. This is a two by two by two, so it's a little bit on the thick side in terms of the length, of the depth, I mean. But besides that, it's a pretty solid shape and size. Not only that, these are dirt cheap. I mean, when I mean dirt cheap, I got a hundred of these for 20 bucks. So I mean, that is what? I had to go do the math. It's actually $21 for a hundred of these. So that's 21 cents per box. And then not only that, the other good thing is that everything else I've shown you today cannot fold up. If you buy a bunch of those, those are gonna be taking up space. This folds up. So I mean, it is a little annoying how you have to put it together every single time, but it folds up. I mean, just to get you an idea of it, this is, I think, 50 of them. I have 50 of them in my hand. Just if I had two hands, that's 100. I mean, do the math. So these take up barely any space. They could fit in a drawer, and there you go. You have storage forever. And uh, going back to putting them together, it's not that annoying. I mean, I've done maybe 10 of these, so I'm a little bit used to it at this point. I mean, when you get it down, it's only like a few seconds in order to put it together. So I'm just going to show you guys unedited how long it actually takes when you kind of have it down a little bit. So, ready, set, go. And by the way, I'm also going to kind of show you guys now, just to give you guys a heads up, I'm not really trying to rush this. I'm just doing it kind of like I normally would. Of course, the time I have it recorded is going to be my slowest and worst time ever because it takes nowhere near this long any other time of the day and it doesn't look this bad
you know what guys I'm not even going to do a retake this was by far the longest it's ever taken me to do it even even longer than when I first did it and not only that it came out the worst so I mean I'm not even we're just going to take that that's going to be the cut right there that's a huge selling point isn't it but anyways um so yeah these are the party favorite gift boxes they're great they're compact like I said, the penny sleeves of storage containers, except they're on a much higher level level than just being considered penny sleeves. But um, but yeah, there's those. So after going through all of those boxes, which ones do I consider my favorites? Uh, I'll guess I'll say I have actually a few favorites, and they're all for different situations. Now, best bang for your buck, we're going to start all right off the bat. That it's the party favorite gift boxes. These are easily the best bang for your buck. If you're going to get one sort of container and if you want to save a lot of money, I'd say these are the way to go. You buy a hundred of them, you put them in a drawer, you don't have to worry about containers for a while. Just be warned that these are two inches in depth, so there are going to be some games in which they're going to be possibly making the container open up a little bit, like a tiny bit. So that is the one downfall of these and relying on these for everything. But for 20 bucks to get a hundred of them you really can't complain now for my favorite dimensions I, I believe I gotta give it to the super stack the itty bitty version the one and one fourth inch in depth is just too great for things I wish this was a cheaper model and the length and the width of it is just a great size it's like I could use this for like anything this is like a great size for just about anything I mean obviously you won't put miniatures in it but for every shits and everything that's use this so uh, best dimensions I guess I gotta give it to the super stacker now this next one is going to come a little bit of controversy I guess but I really liked this jewel case for some odd reason. I don't know. I think it's just the fact that it's so massive at one and a half inches in depth because it's three inches by three inches, so you can put a ton of things in this. I mean, like, you know, I'm going to do a quick example. One second. Like, for example, I literally just took out of the box one entire collection from Inish, just one one clan's uh, miniatures from it, and it fits in there with space to spare. I mean, you could probably put an entire race of like Twilight Imperium characters in there. Maybe even Blood Rage, except minus the monsters. I mean, it's it's just a great dimension, but it's just a little too costly for what it is. I mean, the other thing that makes this controversial is that I feel like if I had the Geek Box here, the one that is very similar dimensions to this and the uh, Super Stacker, but um, it's plastic. I I think I might have went with that because I think it's a bit cheaper than this too. So I like this for miniatures. That that's that's why I have this one up here as the third one. This is like a good like mini, like little fleet of miniatures one. So those are my three picks. So hopefully you found this video useful. I was actually just starting to get into the habit of starting to store things myself, and I figured why not make a video for it while I'm doing it. So guys, this is Gary Pope from Late to the Table. Peace. Catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching Late to the Table. This episode was brought to you by my go-to place for upgrades and accessories for your favorite tabletop games, Top Shelf Gamer.